Welcome back everybody, Adam Solowitz here. Welcome to part two of my pickling series. Today, we're gonna be making corned beef, basically pickling some brisket. So I have some brisket right here, about three and a half pounds worth and we're gonna be pickling this bad boy. Typically, when I get a whole brisket in, and when I'm gonna pickle it for corned beef, I'm gonna trim it. So as you can see, it's pretty lean. On the back side here, it's pretty good to go. I'm not gonna take any more fat off of that because fat is flavor. And before we get going, we gotta, you know, smack it a little bit. Okay, so let's get to the stove behind me. We're gonna make the brine to get this brisket pickled. Let's do it. Okay, now we're over at the stove, so we're gonna get going on the brine to pickle the brisket for our corned beef. I have a very large stock pot, and we're gonna first start off by toasting our aromatics. We're going to dump in bay leaves, cinnamon, mustard seed, fennel seed, cloves, allspice, cinnamon. We're just gonna dump all that in there like so. We're gonna turn the heat to about medium, and we're just gonna toast these. And we're gonna toast them until it starts to get aromatic. Oh boy, that smells amazing. Now, in the past, I've had some people ask me, why do we toast the aromatics? And basically the reason behind it is, is when you toast the aromatics, it's releasing the oils, which is gonna help make the brine that much more flavorful when the oils are released. Now, we're going to add our water. So, that's about one and three quarter quarts of water. Now, we're gonna add brown sugar, kosher salt, our pink curing salt. So I'm gonna give this a stir. And basically, we're gonna cook the brine until, until the two salts and the sugar are completely dissolved. And basically, once it gets to a low simmer, we should be good to go. All right, the brine is done and it smells wonderful. It's very fragrant and it's gonna be killer for this corned beef. Now, I'm gonna add about a cup of ice. And what this is going to do is going to help cool the liquid down super fast. And we want to make sure this liquid gets cooled down to about 45 degrees before we add it to the beef. Okay, our brine is done. Now let's pickle this bad boy. So we have our brisket here in a plastic bag. We're going to take the brisket and put it, if I can get the plastic bag open, put it in the plastic bag just like so. Make things a little easier. I have a bowl, we're going to put the brisket in the bag, in the bowl, so it stands up straight, just like that. We're going to take our brine and we're just going to pour it right in the plastic bag with the brisket. I'm going to use a mason jar just to give me a hand. Oh yeah. I want to make sure that we get all those aromatics in there. Okay, and there we have it. So we have our brine, our liquid, in the plastic bag with the brisket. We're going to seal this up, just like so. Make sure we get some of that excess air out too while we're doing it. All right, and there we have it. We have our brisket in the brine to pickle. And this is gonna take about 10 days. So what I'm gonna do is I have a Sharpie here, and I'm gonna put today's date on this to remind me when the brisket will be done. I'm gonna take the brisket in the bag, and I'm gonna put it in this baking pan as well, because this is gonna go in the refrigerator just in case it leaks, we'll be safe. And there we have it. I'll see everybody in 10 days. All right, everybody, I know I said 10 days, but it's actually been seven. So let's get it in the oven and get it roasted off to make some corned beef. Okay, so we have our brisket and we have our baking pan. We're gonna take some carrots, onion, and celery and just dump them right in our baking pan. Spread them on the bottom all even like. Next, what we're gonna do very carefully, hopefully I don't make a mess, is we're gonna remove the brisket that has been in the brine for, for seven days. So we're just gonna pull it off like that. And then we're gonna take some of the liquid from the brine, about a half a cup or so, and we're just gonna pour it in there. That should suffice just to add a little extra flavor. I took the brisket over to the sink and washed off the remaining brine and any salt that was left over. So we have a nice, beautiful washed off brisket. We have it in the pan and now we're gonna add some water to the pan. So now we have some water and we're just gonna pour it right into the baking dish over the brisket. So now we have some plastic wrap and we're gonna place it right over the baking pan. 
just like so to cover. And now we foil. We have a broken piece there. It's cool, we'll fix it. Just like that. So we're gonna stick this into the oven at 350 degrees for two and a half to three hours. I'll see you when it comes out of the oven. Okay, there we have it. Just pulled this bad boy out of the oven. Let's take a look. Ooh, 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 look at that. Now that's some homemade corned beef. And man, if you can smell it, holy cow, but you can't. Let's, uh, let's cut this bad boy up. <laughs> And there we have it, our homemade corned beef for part two of our pickling series. I mean, check that out. It's absolutely perfect. So a couple pointers that I wanna point out to everybody. Make sure that when you're slicing it, you're slicing it against the grain. So if you do not slice it against the grain and on the grain, you're gonna get a really stringy corned beef. So you want it to look like, like that. And that's perfect. Stay tuned for part three of our pickling series. You're gonna not want to miss it. It's gonna be absolutely fantastic. If you like this video, smash that like button. Please subscribe to the channel. Turn that bell notification on so you'll be notified every time I post a new video. My name is Adam Solowitz, and again, as always, eat well.